Indo Bhutan joint Heidel project signed in virtual presence of External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar and his Bhutanese counterpart Tanvi Dolce. Assam government to set up 3,000 crore rupees global multi model logistic hub in Jogi Bhopa changes start of academic session from January 1 to April 1. The flood situation in Assam remains grim. More than 9 lakh people affected in 23 districts. Met department predicts more rains. Union Minister Harsimrat Kaur Badal launches Pradhan Mantri scheme for formalization of micro food processing. Says it will provide jobs to 9 lakh workers. And Manipur extends statewide lockdown for another 15 days. Good evening and welcome to the Northeast News. This is Jushna Borwa with the news in detail. In national news first, the concession agreement for the 600 megawatt Kolongsu joint venture hydroelectric project between Bhutan and government and Kolongsu Hydro Energy Limited was signed today in Thimpu in virtual presence of External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jai Shankar and his Bhutanese counterpart Dr. Tandi Dorji. The 600 megawatt run of the river project is located on the lower course of the Kolongju River in eastern Bhutan. It will be implemented by Kolongju Hydro Energy Limited, a joint venture company formed between Drug Green Power Corporation of Bhutan and Satluj Jal Vidyut Nigam Limited of India. The signing of the agreement will lead to commencement of construction and other works of this first joint venture hydroelectric project between India and Bhutan. Both the External Affairs Minister of India and Foreign Minister of Bhutan emphasized the importance of hydropower development as an important pillar of mutually beneficial economic cooperation. Moving on to the northeast now, the Assam government will set up an international multi-model logistic hub in Jogi Ghopa with an estimated cost of 3,000 crore rupees. Briefing the media today at Assam Administrative Staff College, Guwahati, after a meeting of the State Council of Ministers, Industries and Commerce Minister Chandra Mohan Patwari said, the centre has already released 600 crore rupees for the purpose. Patwari said that from now on, the industrial enterprises will not need registration certificate for three years. In another important step, the Council of Ministers decided to change the academic session from the current January 1 to December 31st to April 1 to March 31st. <laughs> In Assam, the water level of the Brahmaputra and its tributaries continues to rise due to heavy and incessant rains even as floods have wreaked havoc in 23 districts in the state. In Guwahati, the Brahmaputra has been flowing above the danger level and as per the Central Water Commission, the water level is likely to further rise by 25 centimeters by early morning tomorrow. Water level of the river in Guwahati is now at 49.84 cm and has crossed the danger mark. So far, more than 9 lakh people have been affected by floods over the past five days in the state and the death toll this season has risen to 21. Meanwhile, Union Home Minister Amit Shah took stock of the situation. Shah spoke to Assam Chief Minister Sharbananda Sanual and Senior Minister Himanta Bishra Sharma. He assured them of all possible help to the state. Shah said the government at the center stands firmly with the people of Assam. Meanwhile, the Indian Meteorological Department has said that enhanced rainfall activity is expected to continue for the next three to four days over Bihar, West Bengal, Sikkim, Meghalaya and Arunachal Pradesh. Talking to the media, Director General IMD Imrityunjoy Mahapatra said extremely heavy rainfall will be witnessed over Assam and Meghalaya during this period. Union Minister for Food Processing Harsimrat Kaur Badal today launched Pradhan Mantri scheme for formalization of micro food processing enterprises as part of the Atma Nirbhar Bharat Abhiyan. The minister said the centrally sponsored scheme will generate an investment of 35,000 crore rupees and will provide employment to 9 lakh skilled and semi skilled workers. FME scheme is being launched today 
where we hope to address all these challenges and actually catapult this ignored sector to play a big role in the progress of the food process. In Assam, Health Minister Dr. Himanta Bishra Sharma has tweeted that with 327 new active cases reported, the total number of corona-infected patients in the state now stands at 7,492. On the other hand, Arunachal Pradesh has now a total of 182 confirmed COVID-19 cases. Manipur has 1,185, Mizoram 148, Nagaland has 415, Tripura 1,346, Sikkim has 88 and Meghalaya has 47 confirmed. Confirmed cases. The union government today said a total of 3,21,722 people affected with coronavirus have been cured in the country so far. In the past 24 hours, 12,010 people have recovered with, from COVID-19 and with this, the recovery rate has reached 58.67%. The Health and Family Welfare Ministry said a total of 19,459 new cases of COVID-19 have been reported in the country in the 24 hours, taking the total number of cases to 5,48,318. In a single day, 380 deaths have been reported, taking the nationwide toll to 16,475. Presently, the total number of active corona cases in the country is 2,10,120. Meanwhile, the Indian Council of Medical Research, ICMR, said 1,70,560 tests of coronavirus samples were conducted by the various laboratories in the country in the last 24 hours. So far, 83,98,362 tests have been conducted. Across the globe, the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases have exceeded 10 crore 2 lakh with more than 5 lakh 5,000 fatalities, according to data compiled by John Hopkins University. The United States continues to remain the worst hit with 26,37,180 cases and 1,28,438 deaths, followed by Brazil 13,45,470 cases and over 57,000 deaths. Russia reported 6,41,156 cases and more than 9,000 deaths. Other countries with over 2 lakh cases include Britain, Spain, Peru, Italy and Chile. On the other hand, the recovery rate across the globe stands above 51,23,000. The Manipur government has decided to extend the lockdown in the state for another 15 days from July 1st to 15th. Addressing a press meet in Imphal, Chief Minister Nbiren Singh said steps are being taken to resume inter-district passenger bus service by strictly following the standard operating procedures and maintaining social distance. Deputy Chairman of State Planning Board S. Rajan and MLA T. H. Satyabrata were also present at the press briefing. Stating that other modes of public transport will also be allowed during the extended lockdown period, the Chief Minister informed that a special train ferrying 1,250 stranded people of the state from Bengaluru will soon arrive in the state. Till date, 22,000 people have arrived in the state by trains. In Meghalaya, reeling under the COVID-19 lockdown, factories gradually resumed their operations at the industrial estate Bornihat. The export promotion industrial park started functioning after the nod from the state government. The work was resumed abiding by the COVID-19 protocols. Speaking to DD News, Shillong Operation Director PK Mishra of Maithan Alloys Limited said they are following the COVID-19 safety guidelines and maintaining all the safety norms. During the lockdown, some sessions on improving the healthy lifestyle and maintaining of basic hygiene inside the premises were also conducted. In Tripura, Deputy Chief Minister Jishnu Debarma has said the northeast region holds 18% of the country's hydrocarbon resources with a large area not yet surveyed. The government can use it to meet the demand of neighboring countries. Speaking at a consultation in Agartala on hydrocarbon and industries in northeast, Debarma said the annual demand for petroleum products in the northeast was around 3.2 million tons and with the proposed expansion it will have surplus capacity. The region's crude oil production is 12,444 tons a day and the gas output around 11.32 million standard cubic meter per day. The new pipeline, part of which will go through Bangladesh under a transit agreement, is expected to connect the northeast with the rest of the country, he said. 
In Meghalaya, a video documentary was released by Deputy Commissioner West Kasi Hills District T. Lingwa as a tribute to the frontline workers in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. The video was made with an intention to make people aware of the selfless service the frontline workers are giving. The Deputy Commissioner also expressed his gratitude to the village leaders, government employees, whose role brought about tremendous success in the district in its battle against the pandemic. Still in Meghalaya, an office of Darbar Timpang Lomsiang was inaugurated by Walde Miki Srila, member of the Legislative Assembly from Jowai. He also handed over a cheque of rupees 2 lakh. In his speech, Walde Mika lauded the role played by Darbar Chong in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic. To end the news, the main points once again. Indo Bhutan Joint Heidel Project signed in virtual presence of External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jai Shankar and his Bhutanese counterpart Tandi Dozi. Assam government will set up 3,000 crore rupees global multi model logistic hub in Jogi Kopa. Changes start of academic session from January 1 to April 1st. Flood situation in Assam remains grim. More than 9 lakh people affected in 23 districts. Med department predicts more rains. Union Minister Har Simrat Kaur Badal launches Pradhan Mantri scheme for formalization of micro food processing. Says it will provide jobs to 9 lakh workers. And Manipur extends statewide lockdown for another 15 days. And that's all in this bulletin. Thanks for watching. Namaskar.